Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Walter and I thank you for viewing and I appreciate any comments, likes, or feedback you have for me. I try to answer it all. Today, big day. As promised, some of the highlights of ABBA's first week of album sales. And let me start with this one. On a November 11th, ABBA Voyage hit number one on the iTunes White Album chart. It bounces around because of the sales, daily sales, and the new releases and stuff, but right now it's sitting at number three, but last night it was at number one. During the course of the first week of the release of the album, it reached number one in sales in 27 different countries. So that's nothing to sneeze at. And I'm not going to give you the name of all the countries because, to be honest with you, I don't have it written down. But I think we can officially understand where they went and where they were strongest. ABBA soared to t its 10th number one on the official UK album charts with Voyage. They sold 204,000 copies in a week, totally outselling the combined 2 through 39 other competitors. They, they sold that amount of albums, and along with that, they also sold the fastest amount of vinyl in the century, meaning more people are buying hard copies of this than anything in the last 22 years. That's pretty impressive too, but maybe not as surprising because of the age of the fan base and because a lot of us grew up holding CDs and records and cassette tapes listening to them. I know, most of you are going, what's a cassette tape? Anyway, ABBA released a quote saying, we're absolutely over the moon. Well, who can blame them? They're uh, killing it. ABBA debuted number one on album charts in the following countries. UK, Sweden, Norway, Ireland, Switzerland, Belgium, France, and Australia. Pretty impressive numbers, pretty impressive countries, and not surprising. Now let's talk about my homeland, the good old US of A. ABBA currently is number two on the charts, and they've sold just under 80,000 copies. Pretty impressive considering how bad ABBA's reception had been relative to the rest of the world. It just goes to show that it takes us a while to figure it out, but then we figure it out. And Ireland, you know, the Irish Times says ABBA debuts at number one, scores biggest opening week of the year. Yes, it's the biggest record of the year. ABBA hits number one on Australian charts. ABBA is everywhere. And coupled with the reception and Frida's interview on BBC Radio 2, which I know a couple people have posted full links up, it's a good interview. You should listen to Frida. I posted just the highlights. Frida sounds pretty damn good and pretty optimistic. And I won't rehash my previous video, and you can listen to the interview yourself. But I am sticking with my prediction that simply says that between now and the grand opening of the Avatar concerts in May, we may have a sighting of the girls and the guys, and we may have something more up their sleeve. I just have a feeling that uh, the karma is good, and... The excitement is evident. As for the overall theme of this, as I said in my first video, which I did <clears throat> three months ago, two months ago, talking about the impact of the return of Abbott, why it mattered, I talked a lot about some of the stuff that you guys have said, commented to me about. These guys may be looking backwards, but they're moving forward. They aren't living in the past. They're optimistic, they're perky, they're focused, they're humble, and they're joyful. 
and they're still damn good. And the one thing that we know as AVA fans is nobody cares a lot about what critics think. It's nice to read positive reviews because you think to yourself, hey, some of these nimrods are finally getting it. Where all of us knew that this sound, the ABBA sound, which the genius of Benny, the arrangement and sound of the girls and the songwriting of Bjorn created something special. I've been listening to a lot of different ABBA songs from different periods of their career in the last couple of weeks, especially as part of what we're talking about in comparison and stuff. And I think I'd really like to talk about the one thing, and I'm going to do a separate video on this, I think, and I may need some help from you folks out there. To me, the the sound of the two ladies, Frida and Agneta, and how they sang and how they created that sound is under, if it's possible, it's underappreciated. That sound is amazing, and I really want to focus in on that. But that's for another video. This is a celebratory video. This is a exciting news video. This is a good day for ABBA fans everywhere. I hope you've all got your albums that are listening to them. I've got a lot of songs on the album I like. I, I, I got to tell you. I still have faith in you really got to me, but I'm old and sentimental. I like Bumblebee, which is kind of a fun little song. Keep an eye on Dan, which is interesting too. There's really not a track I didn't like. They're all pretty damn good. Anyway, that's it for